2022 has been off to a beautiful start, except I broke my phone. So I went out and picked up the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and today we are testing this latest iPhone camera in what I consider to be the most difficult photography conditions, street photography. This is a video I'm extremely excited about. We're gonna do some street photography, some city photography today. We got some great light going on. We're filming in Apple ProRes, which I've never done. It's gonna be a good day. We're gonna be out here for about an hour, see what we can come up with and see if the iPhone is one, even a good camera. I have no doubts that it is, but is it something you can use for street photography and what's it like using it as a camera when you're out in the city? Also, shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We're gonna talk about them more later, but you can go to my website, edmundramp.com and go to the blog tab and you can see all the photos from today's video, zoom in, get a better look at them because I know in the video, it's not always the best quality. going to turn out we're making images in raw format on the iphone something i've never done before so we're gonna see i can be positive and optimistic right now but i don't have any photos to show y'all yet we'll find out when we get home and get them in the computer about is the fact that the iPhone uses a lot of software to create kind of like an HDR type effect where the shadows are exposed, the highlights are exposed, and then the software kind of puts it all together. Not really sure how that's going to translate to editing and how it's going to translate to a finished product. So we'll find out. That's pretty much my only concern right now. Seems like the photos are sharp. In the past, iPhones have been a little weird with over sharpening photos as well. So we'll see what all that's looking like once again when we're back in the computer, but this is still a lot of fun. There we go, that's a wrap. Just got a notification parking has five minutes left. Anytime I test a camera in Atlanta, I just love coming here. I know you've seen it a lot in the videos if you're subscribed to the channel, but I just can't help myself. I always get cool stuff at the Varsity. So let's get home and let's edit these up and see how they're looking. Pretty excited to find out, honestly. All right, y'all, so I've gone through all the photos, and the first thing I wanna say is shout out to Apple for their incredibly beautiful designs that they do on their products. This iPhone, I think, is my favorite one I've ever owned. I love the square design on it. It's just very sleek. It looks really nice. Obviously, that's not the reason people are buying phones, but it's an added bonus to have something that just looks so good as something you're using every single day. But as for the photos, 
These are the best photos that I've ever made with an iPhone, hands down. The camera technology is increasing dramatically. I mean, these photos, especially the ones where I spent more time on them, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, they look fantastic. But also a reality of iPhones that we still have to deal with is the fact that they can't replace your regular camera all the time. Street photography obviously is very fast paced. Things are just happening in a moment and a lot of times you just have to be ready for it. And with the iPhone, I found that you have to spend a lot of time sort of perfecting your shot, meaning you have to set the exposure the right way. You have to sit there for a second and really think about the settings you're using on the phone. The main examples of that being the two walkthrough photos, one where I used multiple signs as layering, and then the other one where it was kind of a cool blue and orange textured building. Those two photos looked fantastic, but they were the two images that I was able to spend the most time on to set up. So when it comes to the iPhone, I think for the first time you can replace your regular camera in certain settings, just not all the time. The technology is not there, but I don't think people necessarily expect the technology to be there either. If you're someone who's just casually getting into it and you're curious about street photography, you're curious about photography in general and curious about creating media, this is hands down the best tool that you can get to get started with. I said that with the iPhone 11 Pro, being as that phone was the first one to have you know, the night mode, it was the first one to have the wide angle lens, I thought it was a phone that was gonna be a starting point for a lot of content creators and I think this builds on that and grows on that tremendously, especially the video aspect. I've been using iPhones more and more for these YouTube videos over the years and I'm gonna use this probably in most YouTube videos I do. I don't see the reason to bring a giant camera setup out with you to kind of make vlog style stuff or vlog style media to incorporate into a video when you have such a powerful tool in your pocket. Some of the issues that I noticed in the photos were exactly what I predicted when I was out making the photos. One is they typically have this overly digital, over sharpened look. And I think that comes from the fact that iPhones run on software, meaning that a lot of times the software in the phone is taking the highlights and taking the shadows and combining them together to get you a properly exposed image. And while this looks good, it's still digital processing that wouldn't happen on a normal camera. And also that tendency to do this kind of like HDR style processing sometimes leaves you in situations where highlights are blown out or shadows look very unnatural, which goes back to my point about needing to spend a little bit more time on each image to make sure that the exposure and everything is done properly. You essentially have to correct for the computer and the AI in the camera that's making decisions that you might not want it to make, whereas a normal camera, these things don't happen. You know, most cameras aren't running software on them into your photo to enhance it for you. You do that in post-processing. But I'll let you guys be the judge. You can go to my website, evanramp.com, and go to the blog tab, and you can check out all the photos there. You can zoom in, look at them. And speaking of evanramp.com, the sponsor on today's video is Squarespace. Squarespace is a tool that is fantastic for all creators. We just got done talking about the iPhone being something that is very valuable for people who are getting into photography and getting into video and internet media, and a website is another early step for anyone getting into that. And if you're someone who's already established in this space, using a Squarespace site makes it easy to one, access your clients. My website has a contact me button on the homepage. I have a tutorial on this channel where I break down how you can build a site exactly like that. My website also allows me to sell digital products like my preset pack and like iPhone wallpapers, which you saw featured in today's video. And it also allows me to sell physical products like my photo books and my photo prints. So a Squarespace Squarespace website is a no-brainer for any photographer or creative out there. Their templates are so easy to use, it took me one afternoon to build my Squarespace site. And luckily for y'all, I have multiple tutorials on this channel breaking down how to build a variety of different Squarespace websites. I'll go ahead and link all those in the description down below. So if you're interested in those, you can go watch one of them. You can go to squarespace.com slash Evan to start a free trial, and you can use code Evan Ram to save 10% off when it's time to sign up. at squarespace.com slash Evan Ram to start a free trial while you watch one of those tutorials, and then you can use code Evan Ramp to save 10% when it is time to sign up. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Final statements on this topic, the iPhone 13 Pro Max for street photography, is it something I recommend? 
Not necessarily for everyone, but I think it's a great starting point for people who maybe want to dabble in street photography, maybe want to try it out. And also you can't really make up for the fact that this is an extremely convenient camera. And I've talked about it a million times on this channel. With street photography, convenience is a part of it. You don't want the camera to get in the way. A lot of times street photography can get a little bit uncomfortable because you kind of want to blend in and nothing blends in better than an iPhone. And this iPhone hands down makes the most high quality photos that I've ever seen from a phone. So when you take all that into consideration, when it comes to a street photography camera, depending on where you put most of your emphasis, if convenience is the highest thing for you, this actually might be it and you might wanna try it out. So let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have one of these phones, if you've done street photography with it, or if you found that it works better for other types of photography, let me know so other people can read it as well. You are the truth, I will see you in the next one. Subscribe if you are not yet. Half of the people who watch these YouTube videos are not subscribed, I don't know what is wrong with y'all. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys, see you next time.